Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Elena. And I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. So you're doing the post-test. All right, so let's go ahead and listen to it right now. Okay, I'm going to click on this. So you're reading the three paragraphs, answering the questions, and I'm going to go ahead and give you some final comments on your pronunciation. Okay, let me go ahead and download your speaking file. Okay, here we go. Do we have it here? I think this is it. Okay, I'm going to click on it right now. I'm going to try to open it up right now. Is this it? We're talking to each other. They tend to stand a specific distance apart. Okay, we got it. Okay, now let me put, I want to put both of these up here where I can see the passage and I can also hear. Got it, here we go. Here we go. When two people are talking to each other, they tend to stand a specific distance apart. So it's not distance, but di distance apart. So it's that e or that i di distance. Each person has an invisible boundary around his or her body into which other people may not come. Good job on your pausing. If someone pierces this boundary, she or he will feel uncomfortable and move away to increase the distance between them. The major exception is family members and other loved ones. Okay. This personal distance is not to The P, I think, also, you can still, you need to pronounce that with a little bit more, this per, personal distance. Body odor or bad breath, but because closeness lends a sense of intimacy, that is at odds with the relationship to the other individual. Okay. Interestingly, the average personal distance varies from culture to culture. Americans tend to require more personal space than in other cultures. Therefore, if you try to get too close to an American during your conversation, he or she will feel that you are in his face and will try to back away. Okay. Try to be aware of this. So, if the person to whom you are speaking back away a little, don't try to close the gap. No, it's backs, backs away a little, so you have a little bit of trouble with your grammatical word endings. So be careful when you put S's on the ends of words. Make sure you're pronouncing those words, but even sometimes you pronounce it as a Z or as an S or is depending on the phonology of, of it. So you can probably work on that a little bit more too. Also, try to avoid physical contact while you are speaking things this may also lead to discomfort. Okay. Touching is the beat. There, the T. Touching. So you're a little hesitant to pronounce the, the T. T. Touching. Touching is a bit too intimate. Too intimate casual acquaintances. Casual. Casual acquaintances. So don't put your arm around his or her shoulder. Don't touch his or her face or hold his or her hand. Okay. 
Shaking hands when you are initially meet or part is acceptable. Yeah, see, it's a pattern, so meet or part. So you're not comfortable pronouncing some of these bilabial consonants with enough air. So part. When you initially meet or part. But this is only momentary. Question one. Okay. Who is your best friend? Why is this person important to you? Okay. Use supporting examples. <clears throat> my best friend is my husband. I think so because of important role he plays in my life. As you so say that word, the important role. The important role he plays in my life. Mate is my life partner and my spouse. At first... Say the word, ow, spouse. He is my life partner and spouse. My husband is a person who I connected without even speaking, who I can lean on, trust, and... I'd say he's a person whom I can connect to without speaking. The depend on through my life. Okay. He always made me feel secure and respected. He always makes me feel... So th that S ending, sometimes you're omitting that S ending when you speak. Second reason I think my husband is my best friend is because spending too much time together, we never get bored. Okay. Since time is limited, we don't have much time for other people to spend with them. But we always have time to each other. We have time for each other, not time to each other. I would say we have time for each other. In addition, as life partners, uh, we have similar interests. And our family is a cement of our relationships. Okay. Uh, thus, I can't imagine my life without my husband. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, it's amazing to have someone who is both life partner and let's say to have someone so a little bit of problems with words here it's, it's, it's great to have someone best friend question two where question two two ooh where do you see yourself five years from now what will you be doing be sure to explain your ideas with supporting details to begin with in five years, I can imagine myself having a license and working as a pharmacist in a pharmacy. Okay. Maybe next, I would want to open up my own business. Uh, so, I definitely would like to see myself happy with my career because I love my profession uh, and uh, this job is well paid. And secondly, I can see my son successfully graduated school and enrolled to prestigious university. Oh, so I could see him graduated from school. I would say it that way. So you, you missed that preposition in there. And my daughter enjoying learning new things in, a, in, a, in elementary school. Okay. In elementary school. Ele elementary school. I have uh, high expectation. My expectation about my kids are high. Uh, Again, the word not kids, but my expectations about my ki kids. Kids. So I can see them well educated and thriving. All right. Lastly, when I look into my future, I can see my happy family traveling uh, all over the world to go places we always dreamed of. Okay. I would like to see us traveling to visit my parents who are still alive and healthy. Okay. It's very important for me to spend as much time as possible with my family. Next question, question three. What is your favorite season of the year? Fall, winter, spring or summer? Be as specific as possible. Summer is my favorite season of the year. And there are many good reasons for why I prefer summer. Okay. First off, summer is the time... Uh, is the time, so be careful the T. T time. Toy. Two. To enjoy being outside, 
because of warm weather. I'm happy to live near the ocean uh, so I can go swimming with my family or just lay and get some suntan. Let's say get a in suntan. My area, water in the ocean is comfortable enough to swim uh, through June to September. Next, during the summer, we have uh, more daylight hours to enjoy. The sun stays out longer, uh, hence, I, hence I can spend extra time in my small garden. Also, time summer is a perfect time to have barbecues or just sit and talk outside at night. Mm -hmm. when the heat of the day subsides. Okay. Another thing that makes the summer my favorite season of all, that school is out. And you're having good connection of ideas. I like how you organize your points. You connect things together by those transition words. You sometimes repeat or rephrase key things to help show your uh, coherence of ideas. So these things are all good. And my children have long vacation. It's a wonderful time when my kids can have rest from intense academic year and relax. Also, we always have a great time together in summer by visiting my parents, my relatives in our native country. When two people are talking to each other, they tend to stand a specific detail. Okay, got it. So I just listened to your final post-test in my course. So, what can we say here? So, uh, I can give you what's called an intelligibility score. So, uh, if you take a look at the... Uh, I'll put the link in the email to you. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 7, 7 being a native speaker, 1 being a beginner, uh, you have some errors. You have sometimes... Um, you sometimes have a few language use issues. You have some problems with delivery, <laughs> with pronunciation, as I pointed out. So um, I'm going to put you at four in the four area. How about in the middle, about 4.5 out of seven. So you're still not exactly where you need to be for the TOEFL, at least for speaking 26 TOEFL, because of some of those language use areas and some pronunciation issues that you're having. Now the next question is, what are some things that you should review? There's still a few problem areas with your pronunciation, so I'm going to go over some of these things right now. Okay, so with your vowel and consonant sound, you have not mastered all those yet. So I'm going to say, uh, speak clearly, lesson number 11. Also, <coughs> excuse me. Lesson number 23, tip the T consonant sound you can work on. Uh, also, um, let's say uh, lesson number 19, I think the P consonant sound you need a little bit more practice with. Uh, lesson number 16, it's the Z as in casual. You can work on that a little bit. And then there's one more vowel sound I'd like to have you review. It's the OO. Ooh, as in uh, pronunciation lesson number 12. And in the other part of the pronunciation section, I'd like you to take a look at syllable division and grammatical word endings, lesson number 26 through 28. All right? And those are my comments on your post-test, Olena, and thank you for completing it.